This I wanna nail sports to the one Top blog out of the YouTube channel No matter which sports here we got it covered Subscribe and hit the notification bell What's up my wonderful peeps? Sports to the bone here again man Shout out to all the viewers Subscribers and the followers Big up on yourself Alright my viewers and subscribers So we have a couple of stories coming up in this one Some interesting stories yeah, man, we're going to be talking a little bit about the under-19 players. You know, they are actually getting ready for the World Cup. We're also going to be talking about Christopher Henry Gale. And we're going to be talking a little about Jaffa Archer. Yeah, man, Archer is back, um, back on the treatment table. Yeah, man, so we're going to be talking about that. All right, so we're going to kick things off with Christopher Henry Gale. Yeah, man, all right, so let's get to it now. I am taking this article off a website, right? And the title that I'm seeing here, fans ask Wazim Jaffa if there is anything he would like to teach Chris Gale. Former India batter gives epic reply. All right, the article starts and it says, when a fan asked about his experience of coaching West Indies cricket, Chris, um, cricketer Chris Gale in the Indian Premier League, Wazim Jaffa was at his witty best yeah man i will remember that he would have coached gail at the punjab kings now wasim jaffa is the undisputed king of social media these days according to what they are saying always posting up with the latest trends and thing now his witty and funny tweets and almost everything happening in the world of cricket has gone um has got everyone talking you understand now in terms of popularity Jaffa has overtaken his former opening partner Verenja Sewag in terms of sassy post on Twitter something that has not gone unnoticed from Indian fans all right the article goes on and it says in a recent live online that um, he, he had with the co-founder of C uh, and CEO of cricket digital collections platform you know um he, he, he had a couple of things to say now the cricketer opened up about his online activities spoke about you know um uh players that he would have coached and thing now one fan fan in particular asked him about his experience of coaching west indies cricketer christopher henry gale in the premier league and he's quoted as saying there isn't much about t20 batting that i can teach him he is a legendary player i can only teach him about up um up in his social media game but for that i will have to show him right the indian moves so that he can also create some funny memes he said so basically letting the fans know that there isn't anything to really coach um chris gale coach to chris gale in terms of t20 cricket but you know just being funny and jovial letting the people know that you probably need to step up in the social media thing Right, he's also quoted as saying, I have always loved collecting cricket uh, memorabilia um, from past players and, you know, talking about collecting um, uh, shirts and signatures and them sort of things from different players, you know. So, just letting the fans know that in, when it comes on to Chris Gale and T20 cricket, there isn't anything much a coach can step up to Chris Gale and really teach him. You understand? The only thing you can do is... is encourage him and, and give him kind words you know <laughs> because we don't know chris gale would have would have mastered um all of that so just letting the fans know that chris gale just need to up the social media and 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 think but uh, you know that was just a funny reply guys because not everybody is going to be, be up on social media making memes and joke about things all right so let us quickly move on to the west indies rising stars now this one was posted two days ago but i didn't get to cover it because i wasn't on or I think it was yesterday. It was posted yesterday. Now, the title is saying, West Indies Rising Stars, um, that's the under-19s, to continue their ICC World Cup preparation in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Right? The article starts off and says, um, Cricket West Indies today announced the match schedule for the Youth One Day International Series between West Indies Rising Stars under-19s and South Africa under-19s. Now, the teams will play four 50-over matches in St. Vincent and the Grenadines from December 26th to January 3rd, right? And that, that, that's basically to get them um, prepared. And it will be played, um, based on what I'm seeing here, um, it will be played at the Arnosville Stadium and um, the Col uh, 
Cumberland playing field. Now, the West Indies and South Africa teams will arrive in St. Vincent later today, which would have been yesterday. The teams are using the series as preparation for the ICC Men's Under-19 Cricket World Cup, right? which will start from January 14 and will go up until February 5. Uh, we know that Antigua and Bermuda, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Kitts and Nevis and Guyana, those team will, those places will, 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 you know, be up. Now, West Indies head coach Floyd Rifa, um, he's quoted as saying, it's a, it's, it's a great um, tour for us, you know, to have, it's uh, very important to have these matches as part of the build up to the World Cup. We are really looking forward to this series against South Africa as we are at this um, stage where it is important for the squad to play together, to see players in various roles, to see how um, they respond to situations and how well they execute the plans we put in place. Right. He further went on to say it is for us to also make sure we get the team um, going. You understand? Make sure that everybody gel together and people are actually comfortable. So, yes, my viewers and subscribers, the teams... Um, the, the team, the, the under-19 team, you know, they are up and running and they are getting ready to go. So those games that we spoke about, um, you know, those will be, will be very important as, you know, it will, it will be a way for the guys to prepare themselves and to see where they are at as they go into, into, the, into the World Cup. All right, so we're going to finish off with the Jaffa Archer story. Now, it's real sad to say, my viewers and subscribers, but, but um, Jaffa Archer seems as if he's going back on the treatment table. You understand? He was just recovering from, um, from, the, from the, the elbow surgery. And based on what I am seeing on the England um, Cricket Board website, they are saying Jaffa Archer ruled out until next summer. Right, I'm just going to read a couple lines and it is saying the England and Wales cricket board can confirm that fast bowler Jaffa Archer underwent a second operation on his injured right elbow on Saturday the 11th of December in London. Now the procedure addressed the long-standing stress fracture of his right elbow and a return to cricket will be determined in time. But Jaffa um, will be out of, you know, any cricket for no, he won't be playing any cricket for no. And based on what they are saying, it's a possibility that it might be next summer. So, yes, my viewers and subscribers, Jaffa Archer is really out of it. But at the end of the day, you see, it is it is better to just take a time off and get it done, get it started, and hopefully it will hold up and you know you can have a a a, a good career another ten years or so at the top. Because it doesn't make any sense you continuously play, 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 and you are not um you are not at your fullest uh, you can't play to your fullest potential, you are not fit enough and things like that. So, you know, we are we are really hoping that he will he will he will step up. I think I don't remember how old he is, but I know he's in his mid twenties. You know, you guys can check it out. I, I know he's between twenty four, twenty five, probably somewhere there about, you know, and, and things. So it's we are hoping that, you know. Once he return from this, because a lot of persons suffer from injuries when they do surgery and come back, they are not usually the same. So, you know, we are hoping that he will come back and things will work out for him. All right. So I'm just going to finish up with a little bit of swimming. Yeah, man, because based on what I'm seeing here, arguably the greatest um, Jamaican swimmer, she has called time, you know, and we are talking about Alia Atkinson and she finished off and... You know, she 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 wasn't able to secure a medal in the in the um in the meet that she was in. All right, so I'm just gonna read here. It says Ali Atkinson pens farewell after missing out on a medal at the World Short Course Champs. Now Jamaican's Ali Atkinson, uh, she penned a farewell message to supporters after narrowly missing out on a medal uh, Monday in the 100 meter breaststroke at the, the, the FINA World Short Course Swimming Championship in Abu, um, Abu Dhabi, right? the final race of her decorated career. And we know that Alia Atkinson, she has a lot of accolades. She would have won a lot of um, medals. She would have won a lot. Well, I think she even holds the world record for 
um for for for, for one of the the events you understand it is just that it's just sad that she wasn't able to win an olympic medal throughout but you know she she has she has had a very good career now let me just give you the information that they have here they are saying Atkinson clocked one minute and four seconds for fourth in the final right and you know that that wasn't enough now they say as the jamaican failed to add to her 10 medals um four gold and four silvers and two brands at the world short course championship so as i was saying she would have won a lot of medals you know and and thing for us now she's quoted as saying not the meet i hoped for but i am happy to to see i finished um every every um ounce of swimming talent god gave me now the battle empty many times i wanted to quit or give up but i saw it through to the end Atkinson wrote in her social media post and as we know you know she's 33 you know usually usually at um when you are swimming people usually retire by that age generally speaking and um i think she 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 has been competing for professionally for maybe about 15 years yeah man maybe run about 15 years and as i said she would have represented us well arguably the best swimmer to have come out of our country where female um, is concerned so you know we, we we definitely wish her all the best in her future endeavors and we really appreciate what she would have um, achieved for the country and she will be remembered so we're gonna leave this one right here for now my viewers and subscribers sports to the bone keeping you informed please remember to like share leave us a comment if you have not yet subscribed please remember to subscribe to the channel I'm out